back. It's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we're going to talk about how to draw hair. So let's get started. All right, so this was the image we added the, ha the shadows and highlights to uh, last time, and then we sketched the time before that. So I'm going to put a link in the description to the video where we added the shadows and highlights to them. But as I mentioned, we were going to leave the adding the hair until later. So um, the hair is going to be, we kind of already set the, the hair color, right? Like I've already done the eyebrows and I'm going to use the same three colors I used within the eyebrows on the hair itself. So the first stage we kind of already have. We have this very basic rough outline of where his hair is going to be. And now we need to start adding in all of the texture. So the first thing we're going to do is sort of roughly fill it all in. And all I'm really doing here is you know, lightly, you know, just making these marks, making sure it's all kind of filled in. You can see it's not as thick as I filled in the um, skin tone. When I'm doing the very basic sketch on anything that has fur or hair, I'm going to fully fill it in, but it's going to look more like this, where it's a lot looser. It doesn't have to fill in as thickly as um, the skin does, because we, there's more texture within hair and fur, and that will, will, um, lends itself very nicely to this technique. So after we get kind of the, the base shape, right, and, and all I'm really doing is I'm following the hairline so it would kind of come straight up and then it would angle, you know, it'd be straight up through here and it angles over and the same thing on this side, more straight up as it angles over and weighs itself down. And then, you know, once you're to the sides, you have this sort of hair coming down this way. And that's all I'm really doing you know, it's, it's going to um, pop up and kind of come down. And so it's, it's really loose. You don't have to do anything too crazy with it, and it'll work um, very nicely. Just make sure you're sort of following that contour just like we did with the face uh, and other hair. You draw in the direction the hair grows, and as long as you do that, it'll, it'll um, give a realistic effect. So that's the first layer, and we're going to add... The next layer. So this is still the same color. This is that base color, the very base of the eyes. This is adding the highlights and shadows to that base. But we are going to add in different colors for the hair. Again, I don't always do this. You don't always have to. On fur color, I often don't, but you can. And so it just takes those same lines, the ones that we did earlier, help show me what direction I'm then going to thicken it up in. You know, I know that the hair kind of comes this way and it starts off you know, loosely this way, and that lets me know that I need to have the hair filling in more thickly in that direction. This is how that, that hair is going to fill in. I'm, I need to line myself up in a certain way. So, you know, that's all there really is to doing it. And just like we did with the skin, I'm going to make it really thick on this side, and as we come over this way, I'm going to taper it out some. It's not going to be as thick. I'm, I'm releasing my pin pressure a lot so that it looks like it's in shadow. I also have almost this little semi part um, and because of that I have a section that goes down in shadow as it comes down this way and then kicks up the highlight on this side so that it, it sort of picks up that light source. I also, there's just a subtle hint of it, but I often will do it with hair, is there's that little bit of shadowing with both the skin and the hair along the edge as it connects back to the face because it's fluffy out it's gonna it's gonna be sort of a poof on our heads so it's gonna create that little bit of a shadow all right so then I've taken a different color right so I started with that base color and then I took that same color so I started with this color right and then I took that color and I went kind of up and to the right with it so that I can give it a, a bit of a redder hue. It's, it's lighter and it's more a little bit more saturated so it's picking up some of that red. I mentioned earlier that even brown can have greens and reds within it so since his eyes have a splash of red I'm going to use that same highlight actually and add the splash of red to his hair. It'll still read brown to us and that's the amazing thing again about our brains is we're filling in some information we're not going to look at him and think he has red hair. We're going to see the highlight of the brown hair as coming through warmer and a little redder, but otherwise it still appears 
as if it's a brown color. So as I do it, I am um, doing thick marks over here, but not nearly as thick as the base undertone because this is complementing that base. So I don't need to make this as thick for to get the effect I want. And even though this side is in shadow, I actually still have some lines here that have some of that highlight, not nearly as many because I need it to taper out. We don't want this side to appear like it's in highlight, but the way to effectively sort of make hair look more natural is you're going to put some of that multicolor on the other side as well to help balance it out. You can see it's sort of very sparse throughout the brown. Again, I don't want it to take over, but I do want to make sure it, it picks that up. And then we're going to add another layer. So this layer, if you can see here, is actually a dark layer. So we've gone from this light red to now this dark color here. And this one, so this is the base color here, and this is the darker one. So you see we, we've gone kind of in between the two for the light and the mid-tone, and gone darker and in the middle. But it didn't, it didn't look like it changed a lot, right? We can see that it did a little bit. I used that to help flush out some of the darker areas here because that's the side that it's really going to, going to shine on. But even still, I'm allowing the black to be part of the composition. So I never really flush that out fully. I allow that to help me by having it there and sort of fully filling it in, but allowing more space than I would on this side. But even still on this side, just like I did the other side with the highlight, I'm adding some of that darker color to help balance it out and make it more realistic. Again, all I'm doing is drawing in the direction of the hair, and you're just layering that, that effect up. Now, you know, we can end it here. He's got a nice sort of clean cut look, um, and many compositions, I may end it here, but let's do a little bit more to him. We can add um, some beards in, or a bearded effect, right? And I'm going to do several layers of that. So the first one was just to sketch out the direction of it and where it's filling in, because it would fill in all over. And then we need to make that a little bit thicker. But what I've done is I've just thickened up that base color, that same base color we had for his hair. But it's starting to work, right? Like we can really see the beard here. But I'm not done. I think if we added in both of these two other colors, the dark and the light, it would do a lot to help flush it out. So let's do that. And you can see that makes a big difference, right? Like from here to here, we're really starting to flush out this sort of five o'clock shadow happening with him and it's subtle but we look at him and he kinda looks like he has a beard that's the effect we're going for this slightly more rugged look that tempers some of the highlights that we would have seen before but it's important that we're catching you can see over here it's still some of that lighter color in the dark and the darker color in the light because that's gonna help again make it look more realistic and you don't wanna put too much of it I'm gonna have more of that lighter color over here where the highlights would be but because of the way our hair catches the light, because it's kind of, you know, it's a lot of individual strands going in a lot of directions, we want to make sure that it, it sort of, the way we color it reflects that. But, well, we can go probably a little further than that, right? Like, he's got the beard, but this nice tight haircut, we could mess up his hair a little bit. He's got this long hair, uh, especially it's a little bit longer on top, so we can have it a little bit more windblown by just adding a little bit like that. So all I'm doing here, when I add that effect, so let's and pop that back off and then back on, makes it look a little bit more natural because we have his hair going a little bit more direction. I'm just, I do it as well when I'm working with fur that's long and crazy. It's just these light kind of, you know, I don't put a lot of pin pressure when I'm doing it because we're at the edge and you're just kind of, you're having hair go and up and down, but we'll follow the direction of the hair, but sometimes I'll have it go up if I'm trying to create an effect where it's a little bit messier. And then, you know, you can really kind of have it flopping. Over here we do as well. Same kind of idea. It's just on the edges. Um, you don't want it to be too much, and you can kind of create this light effect of adding in the hair. But it's, you know, a nice, simple 
way to make hair look messed up. And even still, you know, I did it down this way as well to create some of that illusion this uh, down towards his head without being overpowering. So again, it's this very light, not putting a whole lot of pin pressure because if I put full pressure here and I had these, it wouldn't look right. It wouldn't look like it does through here. It's not the effect we're going for. It makes that edge look wrong, especially because our hair is so sort of light and thin. We want that kind of light stroke. So it's just a very gentle sweep of our, of our pin pressure to create the effect. But I also want to add in the other colors as well. So I, I add a few highlights, especially in this shaded area here. The highlights are really going to catch. And if I have hair that's coming down and forward, which is what I'm simulating here, right? I have a few pieces of uh, strands of hair that have flopped forward on his hair there. They likely would catch the light. The light's coming in, you know, as we talked about, light's coming in from over here. So they would be catching the light now. They're no longer sort of turning off to the side, they're, they're jutting forward, they're their own thing. And then the dark, which is much less subtle, but also important to the composition. All right. All right, so that's how you draw hair and fur, but we'll get into more of, uh, of like fur and stuff like that as we go further on in these, in these uh, videos. Um, so if you have any questions or comments, please drop them below. Again, like and subscribe if you did like this video, and I will see you all next Thursday. Take care.